Okay, welcome. Um, if you just came from watching my four-part series or not, uh, I wanted to show everyone how I chose to convert my old tabletop grinder uh, to benefit myself. Um, a lot of people see all the cool attachments, like me, I saw the cool attachments for angle grinders. So angle grinders have, you know, 15,000 RPMs, 13,000 RPMs, 12,000 RPMs, um, really high speeds. Um, not all of these are. The flap wheel's not. This is not. The old uh, wire brush attachment is not. But the grinding wheel is, and my old black and decker is and this only does 3400 rpms and so what i've chosen to do now i do lock sport hobbying and on this side you'll see this is a half inch um arbor and an arbor shaft so on this side there's actually a See here, this is a the slit. So if you if you're untightening one side of your grinder and the other side is uh, not coming out or coming loose on you, this is why. So you just you stick a screwdriver in that, and that will allow you to break the other side loose. You don't have to take apart the the top. Don't mind my tin foil. This is to keep the water. Uh, I do cold working, so I'm constantly dipping piece, dipping metal uh, for the uh, for the stuff that I make for the lock picks that I make in water every couple seconds, and the water gets flung flung up, and I don't like it to hit my safety glasses and make them dirty. So I have two attachments on the end of mine: uh, the flap wheel on the other side, and then I have a cutting wheel here, and then a uh, sanding disc here. And so I wanted to show you guys what I do. Let's see if I can take this off for you here. Now this one side's reverse uh, and the other side is not. And I went out and bought an extra. So that's that. And I, I bought some washers and I took a die grinder to make sure that everything fit. And I bought this kit here for angle grinder to use these sanding discs. Um, for my purposes, uh, I didn't like how it sucked them in and made them uh, in incorrectly angled for me. So I actually chose to leave them off and it makes them perfectly flat between the washers and it's perfect for what I need them for, uh, which is making, uh, which is slimming as flat as absolutely possible and then measuring with a caliper every couple of centimeters so it's it's really important for for the work that I'm doing so there's my spacers and then here I got another one another nut and I'm going to take that off All right. stab myself with the wire brush here Whoop. Now, of course, I had the guards off when I started this video for to make it a little quicker for everyone on you guys, but uh, of course, you'd want to have the guards on. I'm a, I came farming my whole life, and I grew up, and there wasn't always guards on everything, but honestly, for a tabletop bench grinder, you know, I didn't have a guard on this side because I needed the guard off to do this. Uh, I had a guard on the other side because it was more, it was better to have a guard on that side. It's it's usually better to have your guard on than it is to have your guard off. And it just depends on what kind of work you're doing. And safety-wise, if you're unless you're experienced, stick play it by the rules. You know, wear safety. Everyone, I don't care how experienced you are, you always wear safety glasses and and ear protection. It only takes one time. One one slip up, one ten seconds. You even turn your grinder on 
with a wire brush attachment and one of these bristles can come flying out even if you don't even if you're standing across the room if if this gets turned on one of those bristles can just come flying out and shoot into your face into your eye and it's over and that's a lifelong mistake that you can never get back so it's just it's really not worth it not to interrupt the middle of the video but I just wanted to make sure everyone is safety cautious when they're when they're messing with the uh, metalworking. So I actually made this myself because the cost to ship them on the internet is ridiculously expensive. Apparently, slipping them in an envelope is too hard. Um, so this is just a washer, a steel washer that I ground down myself to fit accordingly. I've got some other spacers here. Um, so here's what the here's what your shaft's gonna look like. Now your probably whatever came on your original is going to fit perfectly uh, originally, and whatever you buy that's meant for it I, exactly is probably going to fit perfectly. But after model parts and and parts that you start buying uh, and adding yourself. Um, are going to you're going to have to start modifying those like such now see this is see how big that hole is and what I'm doing is I'm sizing that hole down to be the correct size of the arbor shaft so that's the whole goal here is I want to make sure that I'm sizing this down to fit that shaft and I don't want it I don't want it on the threads and that's a big deal too. I don't want it on my threads because as you're doing stuff, it'll rub and wear these threads out really badly. And then those will become unusable. So I had two attachments on here. My The work that I'm doing is so light duty and minuscule that I know what I'm doing and it's not going to hurt my threads. But, I mean, this is just, you know, paper thin. But I would never put a grinding wheel or, you know, a grinding, I would never put anything heavier or anything else anywhere close to my threads because you'd never be able to put a nut on there again and you're pretty much killing your grinder. It's over at that point. So you're going to put put your, and you can order these arbor bushings, uh, a lot of them 7 8 5 8 I want to say three eighths and half inch, and that's it, I think. But that converts. But that's converting hand grinder stuff to work in your tabletop bench grinder. And I can't remember the identical pattern that I was using here. I'll watch my own video just to remember exactly what I took off in what order. Because it doesn't really matter, does it? As I cinch it all back up. I just think I wanted to make sure I had the clearance to cut metal uh, down through there. So then I just tighten that back up there. Nice and snug that's on. If I had to, I could stick a screwdriver on the other side and hold the, the shaft goes all the way through. And I could stick a screwdriver on the other side and hold that if I needed to. And then, so that's on there. And then I could, I could, instead of putting that on there, I could put any other attachment on there I wanted to. I could put this on there. I could use a different size insert uh, or a different size bushing to accommodate it. Here I've taken a flap wheel and I've inserted a bushing, brass bushing that I cut with my die grinder uh, to fit the one inch gap. So now I have this flap wheel and the other flap wheel. And so that's how I chose to, oh that's what I did, yeah. So I, I had it set up so that I Space 
space this out, and then this actually sits over the nut. That's what it is. That's how I that's how I justified it in my head. So I'm actually sitting this on the nut, and this this washer is sitting on the nut there. And then this washer is bound just on the edge of the nut. And this washer is suspended without ever touching the shaft there. I don't know if you guys can see that or if it'll focus there. But it never is touching the shaft. And then, uh, come on. Stop it. Uh, okay. And then uh, I'll just tighten that back down there. And I didn't get it, didn't get it on there, right? So there we go. Under yeah. that. And that's it. All done. Ready to go. Ready to rock and roll. And then apparently I bent my sanding disc, which kind of makes me sad. But that's all right. When it's spinning, at least it's just a flat surface. It's exactly still what I need. And when the guards are on, you can still change this by sticking a flat piece of metal in. Uh, and what I do is you can take a, like a hose clamp or something, and you, so the guard's on here, you can stick it in, and instead of a screwdriver, you can stick it in and stick it through the, the small crack in the, in the shaft. And then hold, that'll hold the shaft while you take a wrench and take the nut off the other side, et cetera, et cetera. So. All right, well, I hope that helps. I hope that helps people get more out of their benchtop grinder. Um, and I hope people enjoyed the video. If you want to check out Locksport, I encourage everyone. It's a lot of safe, legal fun for the entire, well, for people of all ages, uh, as long as you're responsible. And thanks for watching. Stay safe. Stay legal.